So the next day, uh, Grant, uh, Grant counterattacked, uh, uh, regained the ground that he'd lost the day before, uh, and then he just stops. Um, uh, he's, he's not in a position to um, really go after the, the Confederate troops, um, it, it, at least on, not on that day. Um, and Shiloh took a little bit of the tarnish uh, off of Grant's uh, great victories at, at Henry and Donaldson. Um, Northern newspapers really didn't know what to make out of this battle. On one hand, Grant had, had been surprised. He had not really prepared his army. Uh, he had not set up defensive lines. On the other hand, on the day of battle, he kept his cool. He hadn't lost his cool. Um, so it, it was a little bit of a mixed message. Grant later wrote, though, that Shiloh is, is significant in a, a number of ways. First of all, more men, more soldiers, Americans, both Union and Confederate, died uh, at Shiloh, really the first day of Shiloh, than in all of U.S. wars combined uh, in, in battle. Um, uh, so it, it was a shocking death toll. Something like uh, 20,000 men were 20,000 men, right? That's the entire UTSA camp. Well, I guess we're a little bit bigger than that. Um, what would it be? About 75,000, uh, 75 percent rather, of the UTSA student body. Uh, uh, 20,000 men killed and wounded at, at Shiloh. And Grant later wrote that at Shiloh, uh, he, he called Shiloh an example of northern pluck. Uh, versus Southern Dash. That's how he summarized it. Um, he, he later wrote that it was at Shiloh, the Battle of Shiloh, that he realized what it was going to take to win the Civil War. That he had been mistaken, uh, he, that where he had thought that the war was about to be over and very, very quickly, at least in the West, he realized that the war was going to be much longer and bloodier than he thought. Um, other fallout from Shiloh. Um, um, Grant is actually at Shiloh. He's actually sidelined uh, for a little bit and he, he thinks about resigning from the Union Army um, uh, because Union authorities were not that happy with him. And then Sherman goes and, and he talks to Grant. He says, oh, you can't leave Grant. Look at me. You know, people thought I was crazy just four months ago and, you know, I fought with real valor at Shiloh, so you know, don't don't resign, don't do don't do anything stupid, just you know, hold on to your horses, stay put, and uh, the fortunes will turn your way again, and and that's really exactly what happened. Um, this is one of the things that really builds up the bond between Grant and Sherman. They they really, I wouldn't say that they were like the closest of friends. They were very very different people, but when it came to fighting, they they just had an an, an intense trust. Uh, in the other person. And, and Grant and Sherman basically are the two generals that will win the Civil War for the Union. Grant uh, fighting in, in Virginia beginning in the spring of 64 and then Sherman marching through Georgia and up through South Carolina. So that's, that's a significant part of the fallout. And um, ultimately within uh, Within the sum, by the summer of 62, after a very kind of slow and bloody battle, the, the Union Army does capture Corinth. So the, the whole point of the, the Grant's campaign, it, it does come to fruition. Corinth is captured. Uh, it doesn't lead to the immediate defeat of the Confederacy in the West, but it is a, it is a major loss for the Confederacy. Um, uh, and they've lost their general, uh, Albert Sidney Johnson, but the Confederates still that there's a lot of fight left in the Confederacy, uh, even after the capture of Corinth. Okay, so that's the, the, the very famous Shiloh battle, which happens in April of 1862. The last thing I want to talk about is the capture of New Orleans. New Orleans was captured by federal gunboats um, in April of 1862. So in April of 1862, um, the Confederates uh, suffered um, I wouldn't. Shiloh, I think, is is a defeat. Uh, you might say it's a, a draw in some ways, um, but strategically, the Confederate Army didn't get what it wanted. It didn't annihilate the Union Army, and the Union Army recovered all of the land that it lost, all of the the, the position that it lost, um, and then thousands of 
Confederate soldiers were killed, and ultimately Corinth was captured. But New Orleans was definitely a loss uh, for the Confederate army uh, or, and for Confederate troops. And it's, it's very interesting that um, New Orleans falls uh, to the Union Navy under uh, Union uh, officer, flag officer da uh, David Farragut um, in late April of 1862. Um, and so New Orleans, uh, in, by May of 1862, New Orleans is knocked out of the Civil War. Now, one of the students in the class wrote about this, the international significance of the loss of New Orleans, um, especially vis-a-vis -vis France, but I'll talk about that in a, in a later podcast. So that's, I'm going to stop talking about the war in the West right now uh, with the capture of Corinth, the Shiloh, the capture of New Orleans, the war in the West becomes a little bit muddled. Um, and the next time we talk about the war in the West, or I talk about the war in the West, I'm, I'm going to move my discussion to the Mississippi River and, and the capture of the position at Vicksburg. Um, but that's, that's for another lecture.